Morning everybody in YouTube land. I'm going to give you some information on how to do a timing belt on an XC90. This is a two and a half litre petrol engine, turbocharged. Uh, it's a little bit of uh, information you certainly need if you're a novice, but you're a do-it-yourself do person, don't even touch it, pay somebody to do it. This video is for tradies, qualified staff. Okay, run you through it. At a glance, this is what you got to take off. There's control modules under a cover here. There's a timing cover held on by one bolt, like right in the middle there. And that one bolt, take that out and slide the cover up. Pretty easy, not too bad. Obviously, remove your reservoirs for your power steering and your coolant. Uh, quick rundown. I had to change the water pump on this. Uh, did it about two years ago and it's leaked. So I've replaced it. Can be done with that cover on, bit fiddly, but uh, persevere, you'll get it done. So um, if you're ever changing a timing belt on one of these, uh, advise the customer to change the water pump. If they don't, if they decide not to, then it's on them because this the reason I um, originally did all of this is because that water pump collapsed through the timing belt, bent all the valves, and I had to pull the head off and send it away for repair and got rather expensive. One of the things you're gonna need is a cam locking tool. Um, I made that tool up the last time I did the head on this. Uh, you need to lock the camshafts into position, otherwise you are never going to time this up. The reason you're never gonna time this up is because there are no timing marks on the variable valve timing uh, ends, so I'll explain that. Down here on the crankshaft pulley, there is one timing mark. That's all you got to work with, one timing mark. So you line that up before you take your belt off. Once you've got your belt off, you'll notice that you can turn these variable valve timing units from left to right, or clockwise, counterclockwise, quite a considerable bit, and you go, well, what position do I put it in to time it all back up and put it back on? The short answer to that is you turn both shaft, both um, with with the uh, camshafts locked up. You turn both pulleys uh, clockwise as far as they'll go. In that position, you feed the timing belt back on. You start down at the crankshaft pulley. You come up this side over that idler pulley and around this pulley here. Now you turn that shaft until it's as close as it possibly can get to the end now if it's out a bit if you find that it's half a tooth out uh, you might um, find that yeah yeah if it's half a tooth out don't worry about it just feed it on as, as close as you can to that now if you have a look at that bolt you'll see that that bolt's been moved now the reason is that is how you do your final adjustment so feed the timing belt starting down there working around anti-clockwise feed it on if you are reusing the belt make sure that you mark the uh, arrow for direction because you won't have any other markings left on there to be able to do that feed it all the way down go around the water pump last thing you do is feed it over the tensioner once you've got it over the tensioner you tension it up until that tensioner is this this mark this uh, section here is in line with that section there right in the middle now in service obviously that's going to wobble both sides of it fly around both sides but that's the position it needs to be in to be properly tensioned uh, automatic tension of course now once you got the belt on like this that's when you undo these eight millimeter head bolts uh, loosen them all off on both pulleys and then see the uh, Torx bit there in the middle. You then put your Torx uh, piece on there and you rotate that pulley until, uh, in a clockwise direction until it comes to a stop. Uh, that is your final adjustment. Um, that is the neutral, well it's um, actually fully advanced position of the um, variable valve timing and then when the engine starts up and you get oil coming into these solenoids that will pull it back to the neutral position then it will advance and retard from that point on 
Now I've worked all this out on my own, inspecting the uh, camp shaft positions. There are other videos on the camp shaft positions if you did have to do a full strip down. Um, but if you're just locking them up before you pull it apart, there's no real problem there. Uh, so yeah, and that's basically it in a nutshell. Um, just run you through a couple of things. These are the stators uh, for the cam position sensors that are bolted onto the end of the camshafts. Uh, good idea just to mark them before you take them off. The previous person at the time built, you know, marked them front and rear. Uh, that'll save you a lot of time and sort of going, oh, where did all that come from? So, some of the things you've got to take off, induction tube, that's the cover that goes around the computer control modules. There's a timing cover with the one bolt. Um, this is the cover that goes over the top of here, cover up the control modules. Um, harmonic balancer, cover, cover that goes over the top of the uh, timing belts. We have a mount there that goes to the crossbar between the strut towers. And that's the bar there for the strut towers. So that's where the mount goes onto. And this is the tube going from the turbo over to the um, intercooler, I think, from memory. So that's got to come off because it goes right over the top of the engine to take that off as well. All right, guys, so it's one of those jobs that once you know it's actually not that difficult, but if you don't have the information, and I found no information on YouTube or the internet anywhere, and so I basically worked it all out. Um, I know for a fact that there's position because I did it last time and had the car, have had the car running for 17,000 Ks in the meantime. Um, so good luck and please once again this video is for trade people. I don't want DIY people ask me what tools do I need. It's not a tutorial to explain step by step how it's all done. It's to give the tech guys a bit of inside information what they need to do to get this job done. Um, now, one final thing, you'll notice here that I've marked the bolts with whiteout, uh, just liquid paper, and that's just in case something happens further down the line and those bolts have somehow managed to move. Um, they hadn't in this case, but you can see I marked it with silver paint last time. So between the, where the timing belt was last time and where it is now, there is a bit of significant difference. Uh, so yeah it's just a little bit of a hint to help you um, uh, just in case something goes wrong further down the track but there it is in a nutshell hope this helps guys we'll see you later bye